Steel is a very simple thing. It's basically iron, together with a very very small amount of carbon to make it stronger. Less than 1%. Too little carbon and it's closer to iron, so not so strong. Too much carbon and it's hard, but it's very brittle. So stainless steel is basically an alloy of steel containing chromium, nickel, manganese, etc. Now stainless steels are classified as austenitic, ferritic and martensitic. Austenitic is the most common one, more than 70% of total stainless steel production is austenitic. Then ferritic stainless steel is closer to standard steel because it has less of those additives. So it has uh, smaller corrosion resistance, but for that reason has better engineering properties than austenitic steel. And then martensitic stainless steel has even less of those additives, so it's got the best engineering properties, but it's also the least resistant to corrosion. Now, I had gotten really obsessed with identifying mystery stainless steel at one point. Here is what I found out. The most common stainless steel knives, like this, as in not kitchen cutlery or tool blades like on some wood planes, are AISI 400 series and most likely either 420J2, 430, 440A, 440B or 440C, AUS6 or AUS8, and 3CR13MOV. Aside from that, some companies have gone with custom variants they use on a lot of stuff. But companies like Spider Crow and Crucible Steels almost flaunt their stainless they use, when it is that they are not using very common stuff. So it's easy to tell in big brand name cases usually. When you're not sure who made a knife, like you know who sold it to you, but you're not sure where they got it from, you're usually left with the eight named possibilities above. Most of the time you can rule one out straight away because if it isn't clearly a diving knife, really thick and heavy, usually with a plastic or rubberized plastic handle and a large slotted drive nut there, so it can be disassembled for cleaning, then it is not very likely that it is 420J2. This is a go-to stainless for marine applications, and there is little to no point using it on anything else. If it is marked Pakistan or Afghanistan, it's highly likely to be 430. If it says Japan, it will probably be AUS-6 or AUS-8. If it says China, it will probably be 3CR13MOV. If it says USA, it will probably be 440C. But blades that are marked as just 440 are usually A or B. Beyond that, there are some things that can leave you fairly certain. 420J2, 440, any type and 3CR13MOV are martensitic phase. 430 is ferritic. And I believe AUS6 and AUS8 are austensitic. If you have a neodymium magnet, try to stick it to the surface. No magnetization will probably mean AUS series. If it magnetizes but does so weakly, as in you can easily pop it off the blade without sliding it, it's martensitic. If it magnetizes strongly to where you need to slide it to the spine in order to pop it off, it's ferritic. So, a strong magnet can tell you the family with mystery stainless. Once you know its basic category, you can look up the chemical resistant properties of members of that family they're in. They usually have very specific resistance to things such as bleaches, detergents, ammonia, fluoride, chloride and vinegar which are all household chemicals or ones you can easily get from a supermarket or hardware store. Some have strong or weak resistances to nitric acid. And you can get carrot grading nitric acid online in kits, usually for about $10 or euro. Make sure you use at least a dust mask, safety goggles, not glasses, and latex or nutile gloves and test in a well-ventilated area. But you can use toothpicks to dot small droplets of different chemicals on the spine of a knife based on what online charts say about the resistances within the family. You don't need much, just a pinhead of fluids in a series of dots. And about 30 to 45 seconds to see how they will affect it if left on longer than that. Then soak them up with cotton swab and wipe the spine with a cloth. You may see some did absolutely nothing, while others did light discoloration which easily rubs out. 
Uh, still, others did heavy discoloration that doesn't come off as easily. With stainless steels, once you know the phase, this lets you get very specific. Because their specific resistances is where stainless steels tend to truly distinguish themselves from one another. It seems really involved, but once you have some basic supplies and the test area set up, and you have done it a few times, it only takes a matter of 3 to 5 minutes to determine with a great degree of certainty what kind of stainless steel you have. Thanks for watching! If you like this kind of video, remember to thumbs up, comment and subscribe, and more of this kind will be on their way. Have a very nice day!